Welcome back to 1813 Lifeline 409. I'm Kevin Steele. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate you very much. And boy, we really appreciate you. Dr. Salalongo with the Southeast Texas Cardiology Associates Vascular Center and Vein Clinic. Long name that you have there. First of all, Kevin, thank you for <laughs> allowing me to chat with you a little bit about what we do here at Southeast Texas Cardiology Associates. We basically diagnose and treat all of cardiovascular yeah. disease and cover, covers or encompass cardiovascular medicine. Uh, specifically though, we are interventionalists as well. What do you mean by interventionalist? Well, interventional cardiology is a field where we intervene and fix, for lack of a better word, yeah. we perform procedures in an endovascular manner, all based with catheters. It's all catheter-based interventions. Uh -huh. For instance, there are two fundamental areas of interventions. One is endovascular interventions, and another is electrical interventions. Ah. Okay. For instance, uh -huh. my partner and I, whom coincidentally we both trained at Georgetown University Hospital, and believe it or not, we were both trained by the same director of cardiac cath lab, who at the time was both a an endovascular interventionalist and an electrophysiologist. Oh. So I am an endovascular specialist interventionalist, and he is a an electrophysiologist interventionalist. Works together, works together. We work together because we cover the whole spectrum of cardiovascular diseases from an interventional viewpoint. Yeah. Of course, if you will, our overall practice is consultative cardiology. People come to us for a consultation of the diseases that encompass cardiovascular diseases, and we render opinions on the diagnosis and treatment of these illnesses and when they require an intervention such as a, an endovascular intervention by me or an electrophysiologic intervention by him, Dr. Bransford, then we perform them as needed. Ah, fascinating. The vascular center and vein clinic part of this, that is all part of what you do in layman's terms to appease the poor blood circulation we get many times as we, as we get old. We have a high blood pressure, high blood pressure situation. We have a lot of diabetes in our area. Those are very real factors, are they not? Yes, for, for sure. And um, we, we can talk a little bit more about the cardiovascular uh, center that we have in our office-based laboratory where we're able to perform in a very convenient and easy manner as an outpatient most of the diagnostic and necessary interventions. But our cardiovascular diseases is a very broad term. A lot of people yeah. think that you go to a heart doctor for heart, for high blood pressure or for a heart attack. But that's just, you know, skimming the surface of a very narrow aspect of what we actually practice. Yeah. We specialize in cardiovascular diseases, which encompasses a whole broad spectrum of uh, medical diseases, okay? Yeah. It's not the heart, mm -hmm. but the lungs, because we treat blood clot in the lungs, pulmonary embolism. Uh -huh. We treat carotids, arteries that feed the brain. We treat and participate in the diagnosis and treatment and prevention of stroke. Mm -hmm. We treat <clears throat> heart failure. Okay. We treat peripheral arterial disease, the blood vessels that feed the entire body from, for instance, all new stents, you know, in, in arteries that feed the bowels. Yeah. People associate a heart doctor with putting a stent in a blood vessel that feeds their bowel because they're having intestinal injury. Yeah, yeah. So, and we treat rheumatic heart disease, we treat stroke. In other words, and, atrial, and on the electrical side, my partner, Dr treats atrial fibrillation, which is a very common rhythm disturbance as we get a little bit older in life. Mm. Uh, 
all sorts of rhythm disturbances of the heart, sometimes requiring interventions, other times requiring implantation of pacemakers or defibrillators and, and things of that nature. So the whole point that I'm making is, is that when you go to a heart doctor for a cardiovascular evaluation, it has to be done in a very wide scope to encompass a total cardiovascular system. I see, yeah. And then narrow in on the specifics that the patient may be suffering at the time. Among the specific conditions that could happen are blood clots. My father had a blood clot. Um, th this is a very serious issue, having a blood clot. What types of procedures can you perform to remove blood clots? Well, blood clots, you know, like we say in cardiology, okay, Clots are our enemies. Yeah. What I mean by that is the following, okay? <clears throat> blood clots in the circulation in the blood vessels to the brain, okay, the arteries feed oxygenated blood to the brain. A blood clot lodged in a blood vessel that goes to the brain causes that portion of the brain being fed by that blood vessel to die. Mm -hmm. And that's called a stroke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be one example. Another place where a clot forms is in the heart, okay? A lot of folks don't know this. When I was in training, we used to believe and that we were taught that 90% blockages were the real serious, you know, because yeah. it'll get to be 95%, 98%. Yeah. And when it gets to be 99% and the blood's not flowing, Boom, a little, the blood platelets which clot the blood and the <clears throat> coagulation factors which produce clots would clog up the artery and no more blood flow and a heart attack would ensue. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me, well now we know, we've known now for 10 or 15 years, that the majority of the clot in the heart that produce a blood clot that cause a heart attack are 50 to 70% narrowings. And what happens is, the plaque, which is made of hardening of the arteries, cholesterol buildup, calcium fibers, has a lot of inflammatory cells. And these cells inflame the plaque in a manner where the plaque ruptures. Mm -hmm. When the plaque ruptures, it spews out into the circulation elements that are not normally seen by the blood platelets and the clotting cascade, and the clot forms. Ah. When the clot forms, guess what? The blood, the distal to that blood vessel doesn't get blood flow and starts to die and you feel symptoms of a heart attack. Yeah. And lose heart muscle. If we continue along these lines of thinking, if you have a blood clot, let's say you're in a long airplane ride or in a long car ride. Okay. You're sitting down for a long time and you're not very mobile or you had a hip surgery or a knee surgery and you've been immobilized for four to six weeks, clots form inside your veins in the mm. leg. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They turn blood back to the heart. The clots then travel north up to the heart and the heart, the right ventricle, pumps them into the lungs. If it's a large clot, all of that blood clot goes into your lung and therefore you get no more oxygen and it can be a fatal blood clot to the lungs. Oh. Oh. Embolism. You say can be fatal. Can be fatal. And many, and is a one a very, very fatal process, for instance. And we've now recognized it to the point that our current guidelines is anybody that has a hip operation, a knee operation, gets preventive anticoagulations for either two, four, or six weeks. Uh huh. With a little shot or a little pill, okay, of anticoagulation to prevent the blood from clotting. Now, another area where we really specialize and I'm very passionate about is blood clots that can form in the legs. It's not just blood clots, it's plaque, hardening of the arteries, where it builds up gradually, gradually, gradually till it becomes 100% blocked. Yeah. Especially below the knee, the, there's three major arteries between the, the knee and the feet. And okay. those little blood vessels tend not just to have hardening of the arteries, okay? 
it's it's hardening of the arteries with little clots inside of them as well. Huh. So specialize a lot in something I'm very passionate. I love to work on is limb salvage. 